What's up everybody? This is Justin from Long Beach Mushrooms. Um, you know, we're just starting this YouTube journey, so we figured what better way to get started than to give you all a farm tour. So we actually operate in two different buildings. Um, the, um, our production site, which is, our, which is where we house our cultures, where we do all of our spawn work, where we inoculate bags, sterilization, incubation, all that stuff is in a building five minutes away on the other side of uh, town. And we'll actually go there after this, but um, this is our grow room. And we figured, you know, how my brain works is like, I like to work backwards. So I figured we'd start at the grow room um, and then work our way backwards to the culture. Um, our grow room is actually just a glorified four car garage. Um, crazy thing about it is in the beginning, it was actually really hard for us to get a space. Like a lot of people did not want us uh, renting out their warehouse. Um, I don't think they knew exactly what we were going to do. And when we say we're going to grow mushrooms, I think they thought we were going to do something illegal or they just didn't want to compromise their building. They thought there'd be water running and it'd be dirty and smelly and all that stuff. Um, but luckily uh, we got, you know, this space is actually our, our, our landlords are our family friend. They own the front and this was uh, for rent and they gave us a chance. Uh, we've been in this building for two years now and uh, it's been such a blessing and this has actually given us credibility. This gave us credibility to get our other building um, because we showed them what we do here and we're like, hey, you know, we're a legit operation. Uh, uh, we do things properly and um, it, you know, that gave us enough credibility to, to get our second lease, um, which is our production house. Um, but why don't I kind of take you in and show you uh, what we do here. All right, so um, we actually operate out of hydroponic tents, Gorilla Grow Tents. It's actually the brand that I, I prefer. Their customer service is great. Um, the best thing is they allow for this extension. So this is like a, like a two foot, I believe it's either one and a half feet or two foot extension. And, and I'm not a super tall guy, but I'm six feet tall. And that was a huge uh, difference for me. I used to operate out of a tent that was about six foot six. So if I, you know, I was hitting my head on a lot of things. I had to duck a lot. Um, and this extension gave me enough headroom now to like go in and out pretty comfortably. And it allows our mushrooms or allowed us to uh, use a, a higher rack system in there. Um, so we operate out of six grow tents. They are all on rotation. So every week we clean two tents, we fill two tents, we harvest two tents. Um, and they're all on different cycles, but uh, our blocks don't stay in here longer than three weeks. We've learned that, you know, the longer blocks stay in our tents, the grosser they can get. Um, fungus gnats happen when, when we leave blocks in there for too long. Uh, and then just like uh, the spore dump, there's just a lot of gross things that can happen if we are not on schedule. And we learned that if we clean, a lot of contamination is out the window and it puts us on a really consistent cycle. So um, I'll actually take you to a tent that we just cleaned. Um, so this is what we do. This is the tent that, we, uh, tent that we just cleaned. And what we do is we just do a light, uh, uh, you know, we take everything out, we pressure wash it down. We do a light vinegar solution, light bleach solution. Then we let it sit for a couple days. This tent will get filled on Tuesday with 120 blocks um, and then Going down, this will be the next tent that we clean. So we operate in a modular grow system with the modular grow system and uh, grow rooms, and that's like the best way for us to do it because it allows us to um, grow a, a lot of mushrooms in a small area, and it also allows us to be uh, very clean with our work. Because what was happening before is we were growing out of one grow tent. Uh, we initially started in our garage with one big grow tent, and what happened was we realized we can never clean everything. There was always something that we didn't see, whether it's under the shelves, on top of the fans, uh, somewhere was, something was dirty. And what would eventually happen was there's so, like that, that contain, or that, that those, those dirty buildups would start getting worse and worse. And then at some point our whole tent would get contaminated and all of our mushrooms would not, not grow or die. Um, and what we learned is because we weren't deep cleaning things enough. And it's hard when you only have one tent to deep clean because then you're gonna halt productions completely. And when restaurants are relying on you, customers, farmers markets are relying on you, that just did not work. So moving to a modular grow tents or grow rooms was like the best thing that we did. Um, so yeah, uh, in our building, you know, with six grow tents, we can do, uh, we've done anywhere from 500 to 900 pounds a week. 
900 pounds a week was when we were like, we were pretty crazy and we were going only heavy hitters. We were growing our highest yielding mushrooms and we grew 900 pounds and this, this building is 900 square feet with roughly 400 square feet of growth space. Um, so, I mean, you know, that, to, that was pretty, that was a, a cool milestone for us. You know, we, we always say around here, mushrooms are miracle food. They grow so fast. We can grow so much in a dense, in a dense area. And they're really like the ultimate urban farm food. Um, yeah. And, and we kind of landed now we're growing about 500 to 700 pounds and that's kind of our sweet spot. And we grow a lot of varieties. We don't just before when we hit 900, we're only growing three varieties. Uh, now we grow 11. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of the sweet spot for us, 500 to 700 pounds. Um, we figured that's what our city wants. That's what, you know, Long Beach so far, that's what Long Beach wants. That's how much we can sell the farmers. You know, all of our sales combined, it lands about 500 to 700 pounds. So we're at a good spot right now. Of course, we're probably going to have to expand at some point, but we're comfortable where we're at right now. So yeah, six grow tents. Um, we produce about 500 to 700 pounds a week. Um, you know, our glow tents are pretty basic. We don't have any special filtration, nothing like that. It's just humidifier, ventilation fans, racks, lighting, the basics. We have one air conditioning unit that controls this whole building. Um, and that's about it. You know, our refrigeration is very simple too. We just have one three door refrigerator. Um, you know, it holds about 200 pounds if we really wanted to pack it. Oh, that one, that's okay. We really wanted to pack it uh we could probably get 400 pounds in here but you know the, you know our our mission is to not hold mushrooms for too long so anything almost everything that gets harvested that day is going to go out that day if not it'll go out the next morning so all the mushrooms that are in here right now there's probably maybe 120 pounds so our first farmer's market person already got here and took off and he took half of it um our next farmer's market person is about to come in soon and she'll take the rest of it. And then I'm gonna harvest today, uh, whatever's ready. And today's harvest will go out tomorrow. So we operate with trying to turn our mushrooms over right away. We already know our market. Um, we know who our buyers are, the, you know, they're loyal to us. We've been consistent with it. So we don't wanna produce, we don't wanna produce too much. We don't wanna overproduce and then have to throw things away. Um, so we, we, we organically grow, we grow slow. If we take on a, a new restaurant partner, we make sure that, you know, both of us are really aligned and, and we want to limit our food waste. You know, we, the goal here is to really limit our footprint. Our mushrooms don't travel on average. Our mushrooms travel four miles to the end destination. Um, and that's really something that we are really conscious of. And, 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 you know, with, the, with all the mushroom price increases or food prices, food price increases in general right now, um, you know, the food's not getting more expensive. It's actually the, the distribution that's getting more expensive. The, you know, the, the uh, you know, gas, gas packaging, um, labor. It's all the things that are around the food that are getting more expensive. So, you know, part of our mission here is to limit the links in the chain. We don't have, we don't, we typically don't sell to wholesalers. We typically don't sell, we wanna go as few links in the chain as possible. Usually it's us direct to consumer or us to a restaurant partner to a consumer or us to like a boutique uh, uh grocery store that we that our 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 ideals align with our values align with and then to the consumer so we just believe like the less links in the chain uh the more the more value that food has you know it, it, i believe we do believe that food has spiritual value it's one of the most spiritual things we can do we're taking a piece of the world turning it into ourselves you know consuming it it becomes us so we grow with high intention um and we want to keep the integrity of that intention all the way through until to the consume until it gets on someone's plate. So that's our grow room, 900 square foot building, you know, six grow tents, nothing too fancy, but we can produce a lot of food in, in a small space. And, and that's kind of, you know, the mushrooms are telling us what, what urban farming can be. If we optimize the technology that we have um, and, you know, and really just do things sustainably smartly um we can do a lot so uh, this is our grow room and then we're gonna cut because i'm gonna drive across town and then we'll check out our production site all right all right everybody so this is our production warehouse this is where we do all of our sterilization pasteurization um you know 
our incubations over here where we inoculate. So this is where we do everything before the grow. Um, so I'll take you in. Uh, this is our office. You know, nothing, nothing special, but there's a desk. A lot of times if I'm answering emails, that's where I answer them at. Um, and then we're walking in. The first thing I'll show you is our makeshift. Uh, this is where we store our cultures for now. These are all backup cultures. Uh, stuff in this fridge too, but initially this was actually our um, our first clean lab. Um, this is where I used to do all the grain work and all of our agar work and stuff, but we've since moved on from that. But that's what that is. Um, this is our bagger. Um, this bagger is awesome. It allows us to make a ton of bags relatively quickly, and this machine was actually really cheap too. We use uh, oak sawdust pellets and soy holes, um, master's mix. Um, so this machine just combines, uh, uses volume metrics to combine uh, oak sawdust pellets and soy pellets and water, um, spits it all out of the funnel on the bottom and then uh, you know we bag it up and, and take it to pasteurization. The cool little thing that we added was this mirror. It is actually super useful because a lot of times we run out of substrate and we don't realize it and we're, you know, we're still trying to pump bags out and now that mirror allows us to see if we're running low. Um, over here is our pasteurization troughs. Uh, so, you know, we built this system out a while ago and it's still running strong. It's really simple, but it works really well. There are pros and cons to it, of course, but it allows us to do 120 bags per run, at, uh, 12 pound bags. Um, and yeah, it's, it was really cheap to put together. The cons are probably it's, it's inconsistent. Um, there are things that can go wrong. And, you know, if we're not paying attention, things can go, you know, we can lose a, we can lose a run. Um, but yeah, it, it allowed us to scale up really quickly uh, and cheaply. Uh, and it's a great system. And uh, we'll probably start making improvements on it soon, but um, for now, this is still what we use. Back there is all of our oak substrate. Um, we buy five pallets of oak at a time and five pallets of soy at a time. Soy should be coming soon, uh, maybe even tomorrow. And then this whole space will be taken up, but um, yeah, everything is bagged. Makes it really easy for us to use, makes it very clean, uh, which is one of our, one of the things that we value the most since we work in a small space. We want it to stay clean because if it's a mess, um, things, the working conditions are not that great. Uh, over here is where we sterilize grain. So we first started with all American pressure cookers. We still use them from time to time um, on CADCO hot plates, electric plates. Uh, but then we just got this uh, 150 liter autoclave in and this is what we'll be using uh, from now on. Let me get a good picture of it. Yeah, that's what we'll be using from now on. So in the All-Americans, in the All-Americans, we were doing 10 bags, 10 five pound bags of grain per day. And we would run them almost every day of the week. And then now with this 150 liter, we can do about 20 bags a run. We can do multiple runs in a day if we want. Um, but yeah, it's gonna cut down our labor significantly. Um, yeah, and then, so after we pasteurize stuff, we roll, we, we load them on the racks and we bring them in here. This is our clean room. Uh, it's not all the, way done, all the way done. We still have some improvements to make, but you know, it's good enough for now. We have racks here that we load in our uh, pasteurized bags in, allowing them to cool. We have two flow hoods that we use. Um, and then along that wall are all of our liquid cultures that are in production. Um, once the bags get uh, inoculated, we roll them into our pasteurization, I mean, not, sorry, our incubation room. Um, let me turn the lights on. This incubation room is where like, we spent the most money, but it's also worth it. It's, it's paid for itself already. Um, in this room, we can do, we can incubate 1,500 to 2,000 bags at a time. We make 500 bags a week. Uh, so, you know, things are constantly on a, in a cycle here, but 
yeah in this small space we can do a lot of bags we temperature control this room all these walls are double insulated uh, we also even put uh, reinforced beams across the ceiling so we can eventually build a second floor um racks here these racks are actually super cheap racks that we bought from somebody a warehouse that was going out of business they were 20 bucks each but they hold 60 60 10 pound bag, 12 pound bags per rack um yeah i mean there's not a lot here. It's not super special, but it really does the job for us. Um, and like I said, we can do, we can have 1500 bags in here at a time and we average about three pounds per bag. So, you know, do that math, 4,500 pounds of mushrooms, potential mushrooms in this room at a given time. There, we definitely have contamination. Our rates are probably like about 5% contamination rates. It spikes sometimes. And then a lot of times we don't have any but it does happen and part of uh, what we do is just pay really close attention to, to how things are going and, and we can troubleshoot them right away. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, after these bags get, after these bags are ready, um, these bags are smaller because we're actually testing out grow kits. But you know, once these bags are, are fully colonized, we'll take this, load up a rack, roll it out, our, our back door and then we'll load up a truck to take it over to our grow room or if uh you're a you know you're a customer of ours and, and your farm that we partner with you'll come in and you'll you know you'll pick up your your bags in that in that back garage door that roll up garage door but yeah i mean that's that's kind of it that's our farm you know it's not it's definitely not glamorous it is not state-of-the-art it's not the best technology um, that's kind of our motto. A lot of times our motto is good enough. Uh, kind of our idea is, you know, we, we go in as cheaply as possible. Um, we figure out what the ceiling of our market is. Um, and then once we understand how much, how many, how much we can do in sales, then we go back and we make things more efficient. We tighten up ship a little bit. Um, but you know, the important thing for us was to get started as quickly as possible and do it good enough. And this facility is definitely good enough. Um, rent is super expensive where we're at. Uh, so we have to really maximize our square footage. Like this building is only 1900 square feet, but we're gonna add a second story soon. So that essentially doubles our square footage, our, our usable square footage. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, like, Yes, we're farmers, but we are also business people and we have to understand where our margins are. We have to understand what our costs are. How can we maximize what we do? Because at the end of the day, if this is not a sustainable business, it doesn't matter how cool it is. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter how cool your farm is or, or how interested people are in it. If it's not a sustainable business, we cannot grow food where it's eaten and really be of service to our community. So that's what we do here. Um, those are our two buildings. Thanks for taking the tour with me. Uh, I'll probably break some things down in, in future videos. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Once again, thank you. Justin from Long Beach Mushrooms. Peace.